There's an affordable way to go off grid without having to use an all in one out of the box solar system. You can do a DIY friendly setup. You can have a full off grid cabin or off grid house quite easily doing a setup like this. These parts are readily available and can be shipped directly to your door and picked up from local reseller shops. But this is a 4.8 kilowatt solar array on an iron ridge ground mount where we actually drove these posts into the ground to keep this off-grid cabin running year round. We paired that with these wall mount batteries from EG4 as well as a 6000 XP off-grid inverter. This setup has been working great for months and is very easy to install even for people who have never done solar before. It's pretty self-explanatory and I want to go through the steps, but first we got to go through how we got all of this in. Now these are 21 foot galvanized three inch pipes. They're very heavy. So having this little Kubota tractor made things really easy. But the reason we got it in 21 foot lengths is because they're cheaper that way. But that means we also have to cut these down to size. A reciprocating saw works okay, but if you have a band saw, like a portable handheld one, it's gonna be much easier. In the end, we had a couple of people on the ends twisting this as I was cutting through it. So that way it was a little bit easier to get through. And the customer was kind enough to clear this spot so that way we didn't have to do it. But we wanna make sure that we know where everything's gonna be going. So we've marked it out with these pink flags and we're just double checking all of our measurements while prepping this post pounder. You can see this is a gas powered post pounder. It'll go up to four inches. So we have a three inch sleeve on it that allow us to work with these three inch pipe and we literally just drive them into the ground. Now this isn't a perfect setup because if you hit rocks, it's going to be a beast to get them into the ground and this was going extremely slow. So eventually we were able to get them in except for this last post to the northwest side of the array. We ended up having to dig it out and we can see just how many rocks were pulled up here. That's what we were fighting against and in the end we could not get that post into the ground. We got these in and secured and we still have to cut the tops to a lot of these posts here to make sure that everything's gonna be equal height. So moving these around, they are very heavy. So the more hands you have on hand, the better. So for this last corner, we had to get a sono tube and fill it with concrete. So before we put anything into the sono tube, we're gonna make sure we're square and exactly where we need to be. And because this is such an off-grid site and it's hard to access the water, we're just gonna pour in all of the dry concrete mix, pour in a little bit of water, and then use this pole or this post in order to mix it in place. Definitely a down and dirty way of getting the cement in, but it works really well. Again, if you do have a bandsaw, I went and bought a bandsaw after this job because it was such a pain in the neck to work with the reciprocating saw. It just gets a lot of shavings everywhere and those shavings are very hot and sharp. And so our shirts were full of uh, really hot metal shavings as we did this. And all we do is we put these top caps on top of these three inch posts and you lay a cross beam across the whole top it makes it very easy. And these top caps have U-bolts on them so that way you can tighten down this top cross beam to the tops of the posts. And these L brackets here, same thing, they have a U-bracket and all we're doing is getting our spacing done right because we're gonna have three columns of panels here. And we're just making sure that they're all spaced out evenly and that they're extending off the top the right height. We're gonna have the panels flush against the top and then have excess rails at the bottom and then we'll cut off the excess rail from the bottom. But one of the funniest things about doing this is there are these square head bolts that you have to put inside of the rail and they tend to slip and fall down and whack your thumbs. So you have to be mindful of that. But you can see these here are looking really good. You can notice just how perfectly level and plain these are. If I go real slowly here, you'll notice that the bottoms and the tops are perfectly flat. And that's one of the reasons why I love this ground mount so much is not only is it fairly easy to put together, even someone who's never done it before can do it, but it's a really clean look once you're done and you can pretty much set it to any angle that you want. We like to start from the top down because we know that our top edge is our flush edge and by having the panels then go from the top down, all we have to do is just push them up into position bolt them down and it's quite easy. Now normally we don't have to use the ladders too much doing this. We generally only have to use the ladders for the top one or two rows just so that we can reach these bolts. They're called UFO bolts in order to secure them in place. But when you're on the bottom, they're really easy to reach. Once one of them is in place, the panel is usually locked in. And on the bottom, we use what are called camo clamps. 
You'll be able to see them here as we get this top panel onto this top row, but basically it is a special clamp that you twist into place. So it slides into the top groove of the rail and then it's at a 90 degree angle until you're ready to secure the panel. You can see I'm just tapping it here to get it aligned perfectly. And then I'm just butting this up to the top here and then you begin to twist it into place and you have to apply a lot of force to get these to go in. And once they're in, they're just locked in very easy. You can see these three UFO clamps in between the top and second panel from the top. And these clamp down in order to hold everything together and this makes the whole array more rigid as well. And you can see the final product here. We've got the bottom rails cut. Everything is lined up properly. These extra pipes sticking out from the left and right side are there intentionally in case the customer ever wants to extend the whole array. Then we already have a reference point for where the rails will go. Now the batteries from EG4 are very, very heavy. In these wooden boxes, they're about 300 pounds and by themselves are about 280 pounds. And that's why we have these brackets here. These brackets allow the battery to stay secure to the wall so that they won't flip forward or fall forward. But in the end, it's not actually supporting a lot of the weight. All of the weight is still gonna be on the ground. Now, two of us were able to get this on here. It is very difficult. Sometimes you can fit three people, but two people will do, as you can see here. We did it! Freaking two people. We're two people! <laughs> now there is a layout in the user manual that tells you exactly where your holes need to be in order to secure this to the studs on the wall. And I highly recommend following that. It's going to be a lot easier than trying to guesstimate by doing measurements. And these conduit boxes are an absolute lifesaver. These, I believe, are about $100 each, but because they already have the holes in the conduit box for knockouts for the inverters, it makes life so it. much easier. Now, we do have to crimp on our own battery terminals. You're basically just gonna... We're just trying to make sure all of these little fine wires are inside of that battery terminal. And then you wanna get three crimps onto this copper lug in order to be up to code. I bought these copper lugs directly from Amazon, as well as these battery crimpers directly from Amazon. It's a little tricky to do by yourself, but if you got a couple of people, then it's easy to get it lined up and all crimped on. And then you use heat shrink to go around that to keep it all protected. So you just land those battery cables directly onto the 6000 XP, as you can see right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and set up the communication. So these green wires are basically ethernet cables, and they're gonna run between the batteries and then from the main battery up into the 6000 XP to this lower left ethernet port. Now at the time we didn't have conduit to go in between these conduit boxes and so those battery cables are exposed for now but we do plan on covering those up later on to make sure that everything is up to code and that the wires cannot be accessed from the outside that way there's no risk of anyone causing any damage to the system. The PV or the solar wires in very simply into these PV inputs on the right. There's a positive and a negative, and this system will handle up to 8,000 watts of solar input. Now 12 panels is pretty much the maximum you can put in series. These are 400 watt panels, but ideally it's best to use 10 panels to make sure that your voltage works properly. And now all we really have to do is initialize this whole system and get the programming done. And this is gonna be up and running and ready for an electrician to wire up. And the user manual is a little confusing on what the settings need to be, but we're gonna do our communication here and the code is just one through six. And then you need to make sure to hit that check mark in the bottom left. Now there are different options here. So these batteries will work with different inverters. If you want to use something other than EG4 setup, that's perfectly fine. But you can see for the CAN and RS485, we're using the EG4 settings. And we have battery one and battery two located. That's all done through the dip switches. And on the side, you have this DC power on switch. And then you have another one here in the inverter to initialize the whole system. Then your EPS button on the side in order to get the inverter outputting AC power. There's no AC power connected to this right now, but we want to be able to test that before we leave this for the day. Now, we do have to set the batteries to lithium ion and make sure that the programming is done correctly. There's no Wi-Fi or internet or any type of cell service at this location for the time being. So we wanna make sure it's wired up properly. 
I ended up going back many months later after the electrician came out and this whole system has been working great except it has been having a code 19 fault which basically just means that there's too much voltage when it's charging the batteries and so we're going to have to make a slight adjustment on them to make sure that we're not bringing in too much voltage also because this is a cold climate the voltage will get higher from the solar panels the load side is connected to this cable that goes all the way over to the main electrical panel so their electrician came out and put in this whole electrical panel with all of these breakers and they'll be able to run everything from their pond pump to get water to their fridge, air compressors, everything. And they even have a backup propane generator. So in the worst case scenario that the solar is not enough, this generator will kick on and recharge the batteries extremely quickly, all using this 1000 gallon propane tank. This will also be the main heat source for the cabin. And the whole EG4 system is powerful enough to even run this air compressor. The toaster, the microwave, lights, fans, power tools, everything that they need to power while doing the construction of this has worked really well, except for too much voltage coming from the solar panel. So all we did is we went from 12 panels in series down to 11 panels in series, and that took care of the whole issue. This spiral staircase was handmade by the customer, and that goes directly into this shipping container, which is below their cabin as their basement. And that's where they're gonna keep everything. It'll stay above freezing all winter long, but the batteries are rated to be in sub freezing temperatures because they have built in heaters. They have so much water coming out of this spring that as they fill their thousand gallon water tank, their basin that they pull from completely refills at the exact same time. This mountain getaway will never have to worry about power again. And I'm really glad we got the opportunity to work on this project. If this is something that you would like to do, you can email me at info at poweredportablesolar.com. We'd be happy to help recommend this system. And if you want to visit poweredportablesolar.com, you can actually get this exact same system with all of the same benefits, warranties, guarantees, and so on, like you would get getting directly from the manufacturer, but you also get the additional help of having us and lifetime support. And this will be a great place for them to be able to bug out or enjoy with the family or even turn it into a business opportunity, listing it out on Airbnb. Now, if you would like to see a way to go completely off grid using an all in one solar generator, click this video in the top right. In the meantime, be prepared and I'll see you guys in the next video.